Let's open it across the Africa. But Russell, before you start, there's been a story making the rounds that I wanted to debunk this morning. It was front page of a national daily that said CBN has devalued. Authoritative sources, the CBN rate on the INA window is still in the 400 rate. CBN has not devalued to 460 naira to the dollar. You mean 630? 630 to the dollar. Yeah. And CBN will release an official statement very soon as regards that. But authoritative, that newspaper report was false, total falsehood. It's also in the daily. Falsehood. It's also in the daily trust. Uh, you know that we, the central yeah. bank governor, visited with um, uh, President Tinubu, and so, and we talked about this yesterday. So the daily trust is also carrying out. And yeah, so I did reach out to CBN officials, and they're saying that you know they'll put out a statement on that. Um, and in fact, we're actually going to be talking about exchange rates in a moment. Mm. But the aftermath of, um, as far as the fuel subsidies, where we go uh, from here. The, the, the NNPC, of course, and I uh, understand we'll be talking to Mela Kiari later on today, um, put out a statement uh, with respect to the confirming that prices have moved. So the, now the thing is, moving forward now, what happens? Um, so there's a number of things to look at. Um, if you look at you know, where we go from here, as far as... Um, that's, okay, so we've got a list. To put together a list of things that we should look at as far as where to go from going forward, right? Um, which you, you have... Uh, okay, here we are. Queues are expected to dissipate, uh, expected to yeah. moving forward, right? If, because I think the delay between the president's announcement and people shutting down and NPC stations was, I guess, them trying to figure out exactly what price to determine. Absolutely. And that's one of the questions that uh, Mr. Chiari will have to answer. What templates uh, you know, have they used um, for determining those prices? then we should be getting these prices on a monthly basis. If you remember the PPPRA, Petroleum mm. Pricing, um, uh, Pricing Regulatory Authority, which is no longer, P Petroleum Industry Act got, you know, removed them off, but we should be getting updates from them with respect to where the price moves, and everybody now is gonna be very conscious of oil prices going forward, right? And then the, importantly, another question Mr. Carey has to talk to us about is the exchange rate question for fuel importers. If you deregulate and you tell us if there are li licenses that are going to be given out to the players in the sector, at what exchange rates are they going to be using? Um, which is why it's important to hear from the central bank, because I checked the central bank website and the exchange rate, official rate has not moved. So it will be important for the CBN to confirm or deny whether or not that rate has moved, going by what's in the, in the uh, daily trust paper. Because this exchange rate is going to determine how much other players in the downstream sector sell fuel for in a deregulated market. All eyes on June inflation data. This month, is June is going to be used as a laboratory experiment because the president, and interestingly enough, his announcement came right as salaries are being paid, right? So um, we will not... The, the inflation data we get in June will be for May. So that's not going to factor in. It's when we get to July that the Bureau of Statistics releases inflation data for you know, year on year, June and month on month, that we will see that pass-through effect. Also, the Bureau of Statistics releases transport fare information, and we'll be looking for that result uh, as well, especially when for the month of June, to see how transport fare prices have been uh, impacted. Now, also, on the other side, uh, President Tinubu has, of course, turned all Nigerians to economists now, because with, fuel price, with uh, salaries being paid now, people are going to be extremely conscious of how this impacts their costs. Economics, as you know, is a social science that studies choices, especially when it comes to allocation of scarce resources. So that's going to be what everybody's going to be very conscious. In fact, I expect uh, Davido's and Mama Available to be very popular now because unless you have to be somewhere, you are unavailable for other, other locations, depending on your driving costs and everything for fuel. Yeah, I expect this song to be very popular now. Hybrid work schedules. Um, will we possibly see more people working from home depending on the distance they have to travel from the office to, uh, well, from home to their offices. Uh, I guess those conversations might start to happen depending on the sector that you work in. Salary negotiations for setting workers, maybe low skilled or menial jobs. If you are earning 30,000 Naira a month and you're spending on a conservative side, maybe 1,000 Naira a day, again, conservative, moving from work home to the office, that's 20,000 Naira a month, right? So 1,000 Naira a day, 5,000 a week. If you don't work weekends, 20,000 a month. If fuel, fuel price is doubling, your 20,000 Naira expenditure on transportation is now 40,000 Naira. If you're mm -hmm. earning 30, you're wiped out. Yeah. So the conversations have to happen there. 
possibly less traffic if there's less cars on the road and then businesses to be i mean everybody's going to be impacted since roads move everything but particularly e-commerce where rufai of course has played in if you think about deliveries when you place orders for goods the logistics folks the the bikes that deliver B delivery, uh, uh, yes, Aya is a shopper, so she mm. should know. Um, de delivery the prices used food. to be, yeah, that's going to pop. You know, it used to be mm. 1,000, went to 1,5, 2,5. Mm. It's now 3,000. With subsidy now, you're mm. looking at maybe four, 5,000 Naira to deliver mm. or more. And the thing is, e-commerce players, they push that cost to the customer, to the buyer. Now, if you are a buyer and you are spending six, 7,000 just on delivery, and by the time hmm. you've, you've, uh, you've ordered items in a full month, your delivery costs alone will be equal to what it is you were purchasing. So that means that if, if you are buying items, you will cut down on what you are ordering. And then maybe e-commerce players have to you know, eat that cost. There's going to be a lot of movement there. I'm worried about leisure, hospitalities, you know, people you know, making choices as to do I drive to this restaurant or this hotel and things like that. So we'll see how that plays out as well. So all in all, there's a, a lot to, you know, to look at, it, but it's mainly behavioral change. Also, maybe even the purchase of luxury cars, the fleets of cars that government officials take when they move up and down. Uh, renewable energy, you're going to be possibly looking at that, you know. So there's, there's a whole lot. Um, oh. Again, when I bring up luxury cars, I mean the amount of fuel yeah. that they consume. Uh, you can imagine for the bigger, larger vehicles, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know so it's, it's going to be very interesting going forward. Um, real quick, on exchange rates, since we're talking about exchange rate, the mm -hmm. World Bank, David Malpass, the outgoing president of the World Bank, put out a blog post, it was either this morning or just yesterday, about the impact of exchange rates on emerging market economies. It just posted said that, which is the timing is very, very interesting. So the, 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 it talks about the reports that they, or rather the blog post they put out talked about the impact that parallel markets or multiple exchange rates have on emerging markets economies. And if you take a look there, it says the economics on parallel exchange rates is clear. They are expensive, highly distortionary for all market participants, are associated with higher inflation, impede private sector development, and foreign investment and lead to lower growth. They benefit the group that has access to foreign exchange at the subsidized rate paid for by everyone, which may include the World Bank Group and its stakeholders. Hence, there is also a strong correlation, if not causation, between the existence of parallel rates and corruption. Mm. Right? They continue that saying also that it impacts even World Bank um, projects because of the distortion between the overvalued ex um, official market rates and the parallel market rates. So, it's you know this coming out around this time where we're also looking at the president saying we need a unified rate. It's gonna it's gonna put mm. all this uh, in focus. Mm. All right, real quickly, Rutus. I mean, before you came in, I was talking about the mistake has been made first. All right, let's not belabor the mistake. And um, we've seen all the arguments play out. I was talking about an energy bill. I mean, energy security bill. And you remember when uh, uh, the former Minister of State for Petroleum was talking about CNG? Projects like that, I don't know where we dropped it. Apart from ensuring that all the refineries are working, it is for us now to be able to ensure energy security using gas. We have big deposits of coal in Enugu. Because even with even these diesel prices that are killing manufacturers, if we ramp up our coal production and we have more power through coal, we can use it for manufacturing. The likes of economies like South Africa still use a lot of coal. I don't know if we have capacity for geothermal. All the other energy sources, we should be able to bolster them mm. and be able to put it in a mix in this Energy Security Act and I've been proposing in my head and say, okay, these are the measures we're going to do to be able to buffer the effect over time. Road to this behavioral change, it's not a new thing that's happened mm. before. You remember when Yom Kippur War happened, 73, crude oil price from $3 to $12 per barrel, that even led to us starting this subsidy. You know, that was when America started changing fuel gosling cars to lower fuel consumption cars. Mm. And that was, that's why you see that the Japanese cars peaked in the 70s in America mm. because they were f less fuel consuming and they were right for the market at that point in time. Prior to this time, you used to have American cars, long wing cars that were like five, six liter engine. Yeah. But all of that started reducing. Even recently, I think around 2008, 2009, when this issue also came up, Obama instituted a project called Cash for Cronkers, if you remember, mm. where he said, okay, I'll give you cash to buy fuel efficient cars, bring in your old cronky engine, like you Americans call it, you know, and we'll give you money so that we can save energy. Part of the Energy Security Act I'm talking about should also involve energy saving measures. 
Those are the way forward while you talk. But it's going to bite hard. You're going to have a ripple effect. The sad reality is more people will become poorer. You see, this is my grouse. It's not that I'm not a capitalist. This is my grouse with supply-side economics. You see, we think that when the factors of production support the rich, the rich gets richer, it will be able to trickle down. But we have seen so many times that it doesn't trickle down. With all the subvention the rich has got on taxes in this country, how has the wealth trickled down? We see in this country, I see that a lot of people have private jets. Ask them what's their personal income. Tax. We all the private jets, they fly around. Is in this country, we have a lot of billionaires. Ask their personal... Rotus, is in this country, we have a governor that declared nine trillion in assets. All right. Can you kindly ask him how much he's paying taxes? Nine trillion in assets, over 19 billion dollars. Ask him how much he's paying in taxes. Well, was, that, was that true? Was that really... It did he really... It was trending. It was trending, oh. Yeah. yeah. So it, that, I mean, it was trending. Okay, it was trending. Okay, yeah. let me take that back. Nine trillion. No, is let me take. Okay, let me take <laughs> that person, back. Yeah. Let me fact check myself, since yeah. I don't have the empirical facts, <laughs> so that you will not quote me. But my point <laughs> is that, <laughs> so that my my but my point is that, yeah. this is a country where we have a lot of billionaires. That this idea of supply side economies has favored over the years, mm. but the wealth hasn't trickled down. So the dynamics is different. And in moving forward, we have to make these adjustments. And how we follow through on it will matter. But most, most important, did you know the most important behavioral change? Mm. Rotus, it will have to come from the government. Of course, yeah. If we Nigerians are biting the bullet and the government is still extravagant, only work. And Nigerians will demand yeah, more. That, um, it, it ties in with the Business yeah. Day headline for today with regards to Nigerians demanding now more than ever a cut in governance costs. I mean, very simply, I, I don't think we would be happy to see any government official with long convoys. And Again. we'll be asking you how much. No, they, when yes. do you get the money to fill these the cars? Yeah. But in terms of aftermaths and behavioral changes, I'd like to speak to, to the private sector because this is something I'm sure organizations, HR departments are having meetings and discussing the impacts on workers. The first thing I perhaps will begin to consider is maybe more work Working, working from home yep. in the immediate because people are finding it difficult to get to work. This current salary structure has not been factored in in terms of the rise in costs. Yep. So perhaps HR departments need to start having these conversations and seeing how they can do this. Another business opportunity in terms of, I'm, I'm looking at aftermath opportunities, you know, effect is carpooling services. Mm. So we have those um, little organizations. Well, I think more than ever now, Nigerians are going to be more open to having carpooling, um, you know, uh, to carpool, yeah. going to work, dropping off their children because we're going to look for ways to uh, manage our resources. Also, um, we're going to be looking at uh, business ideas for uh, smaller cars. I already mentioned that. Yeah. I think okay, now so I refute then... the nine trillion. What is it called? You know, that's why I gave a caveat <laughs> that I'm not sure. So I refute the nine trillion. Yeah. It yeah. was just trending. Yes. It was not true. Okay. So I refute the nine trillion story. <laughs> I refute it. So please, when you are going to share the video, share this part also. I refute it. So that's why I say I'm not sure. Uh, very quickly, just to mention that in terms of cars, reduction in cars. So for homes that had four cars, five cars, yeah. just parked in the garage, I think we're going to see that. So the money, the, the car sector, the um, automobile mobile sector would actually start to have a rethink. Even in terms of the cars that begin to market, what kind of cars are, are they going to introduce to the Nigerian market? And then a case for virtual events. We call during COVID, we had um, organizations like Zoom and platforms like that really thrive. And post-COVID, it started to decline because people are now having more physical events. Mm. I think they should rethink that business plan again because it's going to come back in full force. Can, instead of coming... Can it be virtual, please? Because right. now you can't just be going to places. And then for uh, households buying in bulk and um, food prices, one you know good thing about this is happen just before salary and payments are made. <laughs> yeah. So you cannot begin to readjust your costs and spending mm. with the realities of what is on ground. And finally, in terms of making a case for fitness, more people are going to be walking and oh, exercising. Yes. <laughs> when, when you're taking cuts to short distances, say, can I walk it? So I mean, just to put a little um, spin on that in terms yeah. of, let's begin to think of life after subsidy removal, right. because it looks like it has come to stay. Mm. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, uh, with all of what you said, everybody is practically nailed all the points. And yeah. um, the area that I would just want to look at is the fact that electricity is still not working well. We're right. still struggling with our electricity. We need to make sure that we 
increase that one. I was just looking at the stats in terms of uh, the amount of gas that we're flaring, more than half a billion dollars worth of gas being flared. I know that the stats also indicated that uh, over the last uh, three years, the amount of gas in terms of cubic uh, meters that's being flared is being reducing gradually. Mm. So uh, the Nigeria uh, LNG, they're doing a great job, but it needs to be pumped up, ramped up so that we are able to get more gas and then use that across the country because the more people that we have using gas, the better for us. Um, like Rufai said, in terms of the CNG and mm -hmm. making sure that yeah. the energy sources is diversified, then it becomes a lot easier for us to say that we're not relying completely on petrol. I mean, look at the amount of uh, money that has gone into diesel over the last uh, few months. When you look at the amount it was selling for about two, three hundred, and then gone up to eight hundred, at some point it was uh, trending at about nine hundred per liter, and nobody is complaining. Nobody is going out to complain. Me, it's just the standard. So petrol can go the same way, and it is all right because there are other means that people will have for the energy sources. And like you said, Ayo, when we have a situation where people can work from home, we did it during COVID. Yeah. Why can't we continue? Why mm. can't we let those Especially who don't have to come to work? On that point, let them not come to work. So, so broadband penetration has to improve, right? Yeah. As of January, yeah. your internet penetration was forty-eight point two percent. The Tinubu administration says they want to get that to ninety percent by twenty twenty-five. That's just two years from mm. now. So, your broadband infrastructure has to improve so that more people are connected to the internet and you can have more stable internet, no crashing or anything like that. So, this is an infrastructure issue now that we're talking yes. about. So with respect to that, we're already talking about five. G. I, right. I wanted to test it, uh, but it didn't quite work on my phone. But <laughs> it's not working on my phone. All right. Well, thank you very much, Woods. I believe we're going to see you again very soon. Yeah, yeah. We'll, um, yes, for the interview with Aya, once again, I refute the nine trillion story. <laughs> Please, bro. I refute it. <laughs> Rufai has, right. has refuted it. Please say it to the say, say it to camera. Please, I refute the nine trillion story. Nobody declared nine trillion no, in uh, what's it called now in in Zafara. In, in no. Please, oh, I refute it. Oh, All I right. beg you. Oh. Thank you, Rufai. I forgot about business of the Michael Wilson joins us now from London. Great to have you, Michael. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, you'd be you'd be thinking, wouldn't you, that uh, after what appears to be a reconciliation of the U.S. debt ceiling discussions uh, in Washington yesterday, the markets would be up. Well, only the Nikkei really is um, Hong Kong marginally. Um, I, I've got a, I've got something to say about China, which is not necessarily coming out of the markets today, but I think there's a growing expectation that the post-pandemic recovery is not happening as fast as the as the, as the authorities would actually like. And I think, I suspect, that we're going to see a bit of stimulus from the from the People's Bank of China. But it's only a suspicion right now that I'm sharing with you. Southeast Asia, um, no question that that area is going to be an absolute goer. One trillion um, dollars worth of new trade coming out of countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, um, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. But the problem is that in all those countries, there is a gap between those who are supposed to be educated digitally or know about digital uh, technology and those who don't the urban versus the rural twas ever thus but I think it's only Singapore that will actually push forward the growth within that region but as a whole investors are looking at it and saying it's worth a trillion dollars which is no small thing now do you share with me that that when you're sitting with sitting comfortably in economy class and a huge fat person sits next to you and overflows onto your seat and does that fill you with dread well it does me and new zealand airlines are now asking passengers to weigh in before their transatlantic flights they're already doing this on their domestic flights now they're doing it on their international flights will fat passengers be charged more no they won't uh, who do we worry about? We worry about the poor old pilot sitting up there in glorious isolation in the front of the plane, all in comfort and the rest of it, but trying to calculate the weight of the plane, fuel efficiency and the rest of it. That's why Air New Zealand are apparently doing it. That starts next month. As far as the United States is concerned, I'll continue my narrative about that, the US debt ceiling. Yes, it passed the lower house. Now it has to go through the Senate. But as the Senate's ruled, 
by the Democrats. It's felt that it, the, the passage, not necessarily smooth, but it will go through. Um, here's, here's an interesting thought. Um, I mean, I, I, we're going to see um, we're going to see the Fed reporting on June the 13th. That's what the 14th. That's what more, more people are looking forward towards. They're also looking to the jobs figures out the, the, the monthly ones tomorrow, uh, the jobless claims figures today, the jolts figures in the United States, job opportunities show that the, uh, that s s the, the economy is doing quite well in the United States. I throw this thought to you, though, that any kind of deal which is which is being done between the Democrats and the Republicans, and that includes, these are very, very broad brushstrokes. We don't know the details of this 150-page document yet, but I'll give you a rough idea. Um, it's going to speed up um, permits for energy projects. Fed spending will be halted. In other words, it won't increase for the next two years. Um, the, the inland revenue, the way they gather taxes in the United States, they're not going to get new funding for that. And there'll be new requirements for the unemployed to get food stamps. But what that points towards, as far as I'm concerned, is I don't think that Biden is going to get the spending on infrastructure that he necessarily wants. And therefore, therefore, I think there are quite realistic uh, recessionary fears growing about the over the United States. States after this US debt ceiling agreement. Amazon workers are walking out again, 2,000 of them. This is in the United States. If you remember, Amazon wanted to get rid of 10,000 people. What they're saying is that the company itself is not, is repeat, not um, measuring up to it, its, climate, its climate requirements, and thus the workers want um, a, a, a uh, a say in that, um, but will will uh, the the um, they aim to pay um, nearly uh, Amazon has to pay thirty million dollars because of um, data uh, uh, violations concerning Ring and and Alexa. That so that that's they got quite a few problems facing them. Mm -hmm. OPEC OPEC meets over the weekend. OPEC's important. It's banning the likes of Bloomberg, Dow Jones, Reuters from it's Vienna discussions. Um, the, the, the FT will be there, apparently. And of course, all the reports will go, because you always go to these events. It doesn't matter whether you get in or not. It apparently is at the behest of the Saudis, who don't want disinformation coming out of OPEC. Well, all, all I have to say is, if you don't allow, don't allow reporters in, you're going to get disinformation, because they'll be all standing on the, on the outside. I mean, the, the, the information spread from OPEC is chaotic enough without, without involving me, without... without um, keeping media companies away from it. As far as the UK is concerned, um, we've had um, an increase in shoplifting in this country. And so that so the security tags are being placed on steaks, on coffee and on cheese because they can easily be shoplifted out of supermarkets. That's all to do with the cost of living. Um, the UK should, according to a new trade or a, a, an established trade body, should align itself more with EU rules. If you remember, the, one of the one of the things that people voted for as far as Brexit was concerned was a so-called bonfire of EU, of, of EU rules. Now, now the, 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 the trade body is winding back on that, saying that um, we need to rub along a little more rather than the, the continued um, aggression as far as the EU is concerned. And as far as the, the major that what used to be the major bosses um, organization, the CBI. Now you remember that came under severe criticism because of serious misconduct, apparently oh, in April last what, year. What's that word now? Somebody. A lot, a lot of, a, a lot of, um, a lot of people actually uh, said no more. The government said no more, um, no more discussion, and the CBI um, people are very underwhelmed by it. Oil finally um, mixed signals ahead of um, what's going to happen in OPEC. So it's very volatile. And as far as gold concerns, um, for all the reasons that I've been saying to you about what may well happen, um, as far as the US debt signal is concerned, if the US faces recession, then people will go into gold. That's the global view. Quickly, uh, let's talk about OPEC trying to block out the media it gets out. Is that indication that this tussle with the West as regards crude oil prices is on and they want to block out the Western media from dominating the conversation? I, uh, well, uh, here's, here's what's being blocked out. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure you agree with me on this, is the crucial discussion is going to be between Russia which is a member of OPEC plus and not a member of OPEC and, and, and OPEC itself. And what 
that the blocking out of these media companies is supposed to do is to stop what what the Saudis would would imagine to be unwelcome rumours spreading about the oil price because it does move as a result of the government. Well, of course it does. I mean, that's what traders are waiting for. Well, they, they they obviously must know this. But all I all I'm saying is, if you exclude the likes of Bloomberg and and Reuters and so on and the, the Dow Jones reporters from actually what's going on, they'll still be outside, but they'll be made. They, they won't be making it up, but they'll be they'll be. They'll be more prone to rumour, let's put it like that, rather than getting the facts of what's actually going on in that meeting. That's my point about that. Totally agree with you. What a, what a silly thing to do. I don't know if you talk, touched on the uh, trade agreement between the US and Taiwan. And uh, under the 20th, US-Taiwan 21st century trade deal, they're set to sign a new deal today. And I just wanted to get your thoughts in terms of China, uh, U.S. strained relationships, and the fact that China largely regards Taiwan as one of its, you know, as part of its territory. And so to them, when um, um, Nancy Pelosi went there in August last year, they were not very happy with that development. And now they're about to sign a trade deal today. How is that going to I, affect I relationships? I have no idea what Nancy Pelosi talked about. I've seen what the reports are when she was over there uh, last year. I think it was a, a very bad decision to say to send somebody like that who, who seems to demonstrate that her knowledge of geopolitics is relatively limited. To send somebody like that to Taiwan, I, I really do feel as though that's stoking the fire. I'm I'm sort of with Jamie Dimon on this. No, I didn't report on the U on the on the UK Taiwan trade talks. Um because I'm, I'm with him. What he's saying is the sooner that the United States and China stop shouting at each other and start to sit down and to deal with trade issues, uh, your suspicions about Taiwan are completely correct. I mean, that's that's what the, the consensus is, isn't it? The Chinese feel that it's part of their part of their country, part of their territory and stuff. But just leaving that aside for the moment, I think generally speaking, there seems to be a lot of shouting and not a lot of sitting down at tables and sitting down at tables is what it's all about and it's a long a trade a trade discussion trade war call it what you like is a long 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 discussion it takes many many years to get, get right because there are so many moving parts and so many conflicting ideas but i'm with J jamie diamond just been talking about that from jp morgan he's saying jp morgan will outlast the communist party well it may well do but what he says is less shouting more discussion couldn't agree more Okay, uh, Michael, I was just uh, wondering, uh, in terms of the rights of those who are going to be flying on uh, New Zealand's airline, uh, whether they will feel like their rights is being um, messed around with, I don't know what they will be saying, whether some people will be suing them that I do not want to be weighed before I get on the airline. But also there's this concern about um, the Republicans and the Democrats. It looks like, would you say that they're playing politics when they say that they're not, they didn't get enough in the negotiation and the results when it came to uh, the issue of the debt ceiling being raised? But the real question that I want to ask you, though, is on the shoplifting in the UK. What is the numbers in terms of the level of poverty? Because people have always been shoplifting in the UK. It's not new. And also there are pickpockets everywhere that people get notices in the train station, subways and everywhere that um, there are pickpockets. So be careful. Just make sure you look after your things. Is it that the level of poverty has gone so high that this has become something that is quite uh, regular now. Uh, I, I, you, you may be right. I don't know. I think that I think that pickpockets exist in in all sorts of uh, all sorts of capitals. I mean, uh, I was recently in Rome, for example, where you have to be very very careful. Don't even talk about Naples, and and don't even talk about Paris. And this is next to Notre Dame. So I mean, it happens all, all over the world. Well, that's Europe, but I'm sure it happens all over the world. No, all all the story is this morning. I. Um, the, the, the supermarkets are now, t they, they did tag things like, um, had security things like, like razor blades, for example, little, you know, those little disposable razor blades, which are, are easily stolen. What what they're doing now is they're, they're experiencing a lot of shoplifting. I was in a store yesterday and I actually witnessed it. I couldn't get after them quickly enough because the security people immediately came in, but somebody clearly just went off with a whole trolley of stuff, just disappeared completely. Um, I, I think the cost of living has got a great deal to do with that. What I was reporting on was more the supermarkets actually tagging things like steak.
steaks and things like coffee and things like cheese, which are per side okay. is relatively expensive and very easy to smuggle out. That's what's going on. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael, for it. I really appreciate you.